Yep, I got these. I got these two months ago. They look like the same ones you've had in high school. My ears were in Pearson High School. My high school. Oh, yeah. No, I don't have those anymore. <laughs> Welcome back to our stupid directs. Dean, it's up, Corbin. I'm red. Can you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, for more true content? Shame. 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 What I see sitting over there underneath the. Uh, today we are reacting to a. It smells like your mom. Oh my god. Uh, we are reacting to a crazy little thing called. Love? No. Oh. I can't say that. Crazy little things called. Shafrawakum. Kair Saddam Project. Rajani. Gayatri. It's a collaboration between Ranjani Gayatri, the legendary Carnatic duo, and the Thayer Sadam Project, an initiative by Ambi Subranan, Subramaniam, a child prodigy violinist, son of legendary violinist Dr. L. Subramaniam, Bindu Subramaniam, singer and music educator and daughter of Dr. L. Subramaniam, Mahesh Raghavan, a Carnatic music fusion artist, uh, this is based on the Raga Shakrabam. Enjoy. Cool. Very cool. Excellent. So are we going to see this prodigy, I assume? I think so. Okay. All right, here we go.
So cool. Wow. It was definitely one of the coolest blending of everything. Like obviously the, the techno and he was doing like almost like Indian instruments techno. Right. Uh, along with the instruments, violin and tabla. It was it was incredible. Right from the get-go I was surprised because when it said it was this combination that had violin and carnatic singing. I didn't expect it to be a driving digital rhythm, mm -hmm. which was cool. It was really cool. And that violin, okay, for those of you who've never seen or played a violin up close, the strings on a violin don't lay flat on the fret like they do on a guitar or a bass. They're, they're angled. So if you were holding a violin from the bottom of the body and looking straight up it, it looks like that. And that's why when they take the bow across the strings, they go over and under because they're hitting the lower strings and the higher strings based on that little hill they go over. The speed at which he was going mm -hmm. from the lower string to the higher string and then doing triplets and sometimes, I think he was doing 30 seconds with his freaking finger on some of the strings. And there was also, right at the very beginning, I wanted to know if the tonality I was hearing in his violin was something they did in production, or if that's just the sound he gets from his violin, because there was a tonality of his string that was much, this, I'm gonna get weird on this one, uh, it, was, it was broader. It was like if the tonality of other violinists have a string that seems, if it was fatter, seem like thin, his seemed to have a more open, rounded tone to it. Mm -hmm. I'm, blown away yeah by him and the, the ladies vocals were incredible yeah the ladies were incredible the whole entire production of this entire video i mean they should have a coke studios absolutely they, they should have a coke studio song that lasts for freaking half an hour which is uh equivalent to the the quality of song it was um it was incredible how many views has that gotten i think like half a mil okay that's it not way enough. more than that it should have freaking 10 times that. It should have 51 million views. Yeah. That's so freaking good. Ugh. Ah. Cool. It's always fun <laughs> to have those. Uh, what? It's just one of those moments where I get aggravated about... On the one hand, I love the fact that we live in a world where somebody can do something really stupid and they get 5 billion views, right? Yeah. On the other hand, I get really irritated that something stupid that really has no merit to it other than it was dumb can get more attention than something as magnificent as that level of artistry. I just, I wish, I wish we could celebrate more things that are this uplifting of the human spirit and, and creation than a lot of the crap that's out there. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's what that's so share this with everybody. And it's one of the big things, even in the entertainment industry, that obviously Bollywood's going through that whole thing right now of people not wanting to, stupidly for some, yeah. not wanting to watch anything Bollywood puts out. Yeah. Um, but then also they don't support films like the one, uh, like smaller independent films that are yeah. artistic. Yeah. But, and that's not just Bollywood, that's, that's everywhere. And it's been that way forever. It's been that way. If you study the history of art, it's just always been that way forever. There's oftentimes things that get elevated that never should have been and, and things that weren't elevated that should, you know, it's always elevated good artistry. Yes, this, but, share this with as many people as possible. Regardless, uh, if we're talking about Bollywood, regardless of if they are the biggest star, if it's good artistry, spread it. If yes. it's bad artistry, don't support it. There you go. That's the simplest way I can describe it. And that is absolutely one of the things that's at the heart of why we do what we do. It's what we did before the channel existed. Mm -hmm. We would tell people, don't go see that movie because we don't want you putting money in it because if you put money in it, that means they're gonna make more of that crap. Mm -hmm. Go put your money in that film so they make more of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, baby. Send us more of this. <laughs> Ding ding da 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 ding ding